Oh, I'm getting ready to rebuild the uh, apron. Uh, it's had a good degrease, de cleaned it off, give it a coat of paint as you can see, or three. And I've cleaned off all the machined faces. So they, these are cast, they're machined. Because um, some of the fits are quite tight. Um, I don't think any of these are actually bearings. Um, so I think they're all clearance, but they're, they're tight enough that a coat of paint stops it. So first job is to get the two uh, actuators in, which transfer the drive from the drive shaft running through uh, via a key. And one takes it to basically moving the traverse across for, uh, what do you call that? The turning proper, and then the other one covers you for facing. So that's the uh, one of the assemblies. Um, the gears are handed, and I, I'll be honest, I thought the castings would be handed. So it's offset there, and it isn't. It doesn't appear to be. But anyway, these are the two that came out. And the castings are both the same. Uh, my problem is I've got to work out which way around they go, which means referring to the pictures which are on the phone which I'm filming with. <laughs> anyway, they, they, you got one goes through there and one goes through the other side. Um, both of them have had a strip down with the exception that I can't remember which one it is but there's a locking um, grub screw, set screw with a uh, uh, slot for a screwdriver and the one that's in one of the pieces I think it's this one um, half of the slot has been chewed off so the only way of getting it out was to drill it out and it spins all right, and I didn't find any anything of an issue with the other one, so I've pretty much just flushed it through with some uh, white spirits. Put some ISO 32 in it, and it runs all right, so I'm calling that done. Uh, I don't didn't see the point in trying to drill it out and replace it, just for the sake of it. These have all took out, these are the, the locking latches. You see that? So you, you lift it up, in it from its bottom position and the latch latches on to uh, a square headed screw we'll see it as we're building it up so yeah uh, you have to forgive me whilst I cut the footage and uh, remind myself which way round they go i think it's that way not like that now i've got oil all over my hands yeah it's geared to the middle worm to the outside uh, now if you remember when I took it apart it was a pain in the uh, the rear end trying to hold the thing I need to somehow come up with a way of holding it up so I'll get that sorted and then uh, I want to be able to poke these through and then wiggle these tubes that fit through well, it's a bit of a change in camera angle because uh, obviously that thing's now 90 degrees well, just off um, We'll have to see how it goes. Right, so... Uh, so that pokes through. And then there's a... One of these that goes in the middle. I don't know whether you can see that. There's a bit of wear on the end there. That's probably 10 thou. It's... Uh, offset but you know I don't think it's going to do a great deal of problem I don't think it's going to give me a great deal of a problem
Right, so the next bit I'm going to put in is the um, half nuts. Now, when I took these out, um, they were encrusted in what could have been grease, but I'm more inclined to think it was just oil with a load of crap in it. Um, I can't see any root for oil. That could be that therefore it was grease, but uh, my mentor, if you like, Chris, used to say you only use grease when stuff's moving so fast the oil will get thrown off. Uh, that stacks up. So this is slideway oil, which is a bit sticky. But when you think, you know, there's half nuts moving up and down, it ain't exactly flying around, is it? And there's a, a top and a bottom. And the bottom is the bigger one. And they just sit. Well, in that case, just fall out. <laughs> Those little bits of advice that Chris was uh, doling out, um, just off the cuff comments, but they were born from an awful lot of experience. Not something you can pick up out of a book in five minutes. So they kind of sit like that and then they're clamped on with a plate at the back. I'm only putting a bit of oil over the mating faces just so that uh, it doesn't corrode. What I can't remember is which way round was top and bottom on the plate. Or indeed where the hole was. And given that that's sticking up a bit higher, it might be upside down. Yeah, I would have expected to see an oil gallery of some form. think that that's it that goes on from the back face in which case we can flop it down that way and start looking at the other bits I won't lie I've started to put it together because I got a bit of a dilemma I knew that that shaft and I've just gone back through the video of me taking it apart which is half an hour long so uh, and I still haven't had my cup of tea. So I knew that, that that shaft was there. And that shaft is what the handle goes on. Thus. I then knew that this gear went on here. Now, you can see the trauma that, that somebody's given that. There's no way on earth that this damage was caused when it was built originally so somebody's been into it because it's just not the sort of thing they would have done besides which the bloody thing fits that way around right. 
And I'm thinking, oh, jolly good, yeah, okay. I can see a few tap marks where they tacked it on. And the key that fitted it around the key, it had swollen a bit. Um, which, I, if you recall on the disassembly, I dressed off with a diamond hone. And I think oh, that explains the somewhat light hammer marks this side. But then I started looking at it thinking, hang on, that's the handle. When that's winding round, you're supposed to be picking up on this to drive it round to move on the gear on the, the rack. Oh dear. So I went back all through the footage to try and determine how that goes together, what am I missing? And then the gremlins of doubt started creeping in with a maybe that's not original, maybe that's been added on. Because you gotta remember when I bought the lathe, it was a bit of a um odd situation. I'd got about four four about a five hour drive down there, arrived and the guy weren't ready for me. I then I had to wait two hours, by which time it was gone off seven at night, getting dark. And uh, I hadn't actually physically seen the lathe run. I certainly don't remember getting hold of the, the handle on the <laughs> carriage and winding it backwards and forwards to see if it works. I mean, why would you? So the, doubt, the gremlins of doubt are in there going like, oh, it don't work, it don't work, you're missing a bit. And then I thought to myself, hang on a minute. There's nothing connecting up with that sprocket. Oh, dozy bastard, it's supposed to sit there. And that distance gets set by the uh, handle boss. So quite clearly, it's too bloody late and I should have had a cup of tea half an hour ago. Which is what I'm going off to do now. And then we'll come back and build it up. Alright, we'll try and crack on with this now. Um, all I've done is poked in... Well, these two come from the back through. And that one's just sat there. That's the key that fits on the back of there, and that's the first gear that goes on. Which conveniently is a pain in the rear to get to. Just looking at the witness marks on the key to work out the top and bottom. And you will note no hammering and banging. And let me just nip up the grub screw. Is it me that just picks out the wrong one every time? Now I haven't put any lube down it so I'll do all that when I've done. Get some ISO 32 because it's thin and it'll reach the places that other oils don't. Right, um, next one's the pick up from that and the transfer to that. Probably needed to go in first. Yeah. Bollocks. Arse. It's not as if I videoed it when I took it apart. <clears throat> you can't actually see what I'm doing. Let's poke that in. Knock that down. Uh, 
as I'm building this up on the news, it's split between the, uh, we're all doomed because of the apocalyptic virus going around and uh, the memes associated with it on social media. And I read one this morning, it was, <laughs> did make me laugh. It said, uh, you're not shaking other people's hands because of fear of coronavirus spreading. I'm not shaking other people's hands <laughs> because of the shortfall in toilet paper. <laughs> it just made me laugh. You need to keep a bit of humour. So that's those two. And that one. All these have got oil points on the end there which picks up off the plate and the drilling through there. So I'm just going to put the nozzle up and pump them through. So you can see how that then, if this is driven, these are driven by the, the, the shaft that goes through the back and you lift it up, lock it in, and that transfers the drive up to there. The same for that one. And obviously when the, uh, when the handle's on, as we've now established, you whiz the handle around and that does that bit. Uh, cam for the doodah bit. Doodah bit being the technical term. I'm just daubing a bit of oil on, give it a sporting chance. So that's where these two followers go. See the number four stamped on there, upside down. I suspect those nut, those uh, half nuts have got to be in a particular location for it to engage. That's them in there. There we go. There we go. And then there was a little spring. Now there was the dangly bit, which I'm not sure how it fits. I think it's in that hole. And then the main gear. close isn't it so this was the bit that kind of dangled off it's all, evidently it goes something like that so it's possibly the bit that's driving that. so that that must be the lock that stops those from going in not glad we've clarified what that did. So I'm going to put some oil in each of the holes and then uh, got to fit the the front cover and then it's the bits that go on the end of that, that, that and that's it. That was relatively straightforward. <laughs> well, I've just cleaned up the uh, front face so uh, We'll uh, see how many of these shafts we can get to encourage into position without me losing my rag.
course it wants to move. Why wouldn't it? Would have been bright when I sat it flat anyway. a bit tight. <laughs> Realise I'm tapping it and holding it apart with my fingers. Right, and this tube is an incredibly fine thread on it. I don't know what it is, I haven't measured it. Uh, and it winds all the way in. So it's tedious, I'm guessing. So you get to there. Now when I took this off, there were no markings on it to suggest front or back. There's a witness mark on that side, but not so much. Tiny little burr on the end of the uh, brass gear thread. Couldn't see it. Now it's not clear to me, anyway, how far down I have to screw this. That's too far because off the end there's a slot in it there which I thought was originally just a hole but when I cleaned the uh, swarf out it was actually a slot and then there was a um, like a dowel I think it was a tapered dowel I've drilled and tapped that out for a quarter inch BSF so and I've made up a little oop unit there and that fits nicely into the slot so all I've got to do is wind this in and out until that slot is at a position so I'm thinking if I go as far that way as I can line up that screw it in 
and then I'll know that that's fully extended. If it's not, I'll have to unwind it and I'll take that out, unwind it and shovel it along. Yeah. So I've fitted the uh, pin. There's a little bit of wiggle. And as you move that round, it's actually, you know, it's easy to see at that end. That's pulling it in very, 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 very slowly. <laughs> Whatever the pitch is on there. I'm just going to get my uh, thread gauge out and see what the pitch is. Be interesting. So that's the uh, adjuster put on, and that's got graduations 0 to 25. The thread on that thing is uh, 20 threads per inch. Uh, and what, happen what I think is happening is as you turn this. It's obviously sent adjusting that, that end, uh, which is the end at the stop. So it, it I'm assuming 1 to 25, or 0 to 25, and then thou. So you've got basically a thousandth of an inch adjustment. Uh, I don't know, about half an inch you've got in terms of throw. Yeah, complicated way of doing it, but there we go. That's the thread indicator. So just the handle to go on and, and this guard over this and then these two trips once setting up which I'll do once it's hanging. Looks better than it did.